Hello guys, Herman here from Visaya. Now, at this very moment, there is an instrumentation engineer selecting and dimensioning some instruments. She, yes, she, hashtag feminism, has to select the appropriate process connections, dimensions, ranges, certifications, etc. for these instruments. But there is one feature that has puzzled engineers for years, the material. Selecting the right material and coatings will guarantee that your instruments will withstand the press conditions and it will not contaminate your products. So where do I start from? How do I know what kind of material I need to select? What are those numbers and what do they mean? Okay, let's start from the basics. Materials used in the industry are divided among four families. Plastics, ceramics, metals, and composites. Most of the instruments used in process automation are made from metallic materials. And the most common metal used in instruments is stainless steel. So what's stainless steel? To explain that, I need to explain what steel is. Steel is made from one of the most common metals in the world, iron. Iron on its own will have not been able to change the world as steel did. Actually, you can measure the economic growth of a country by measuring how much steel it produces and consumes. To make steel, you need to add carbon to iron. Steel has a carbon content between 0.08% and 2%. This little content of carbon is able to increase the mechanical properties of iron, making it one of the most versatile materials ever used. If you remember our temperature video from some weeks back, I explained how Japanese sword makers were able to tell temperature by looking at the color of a glowing katana. Actually, they did much more. They had a deep understanding of the properties of the metal and the effects of carbon content in the blade. The core of the blade, or shingane, was made with low carbon steel that is resilient and flexible. The edge, on the other hand, was done with tamahagane, a high content carbon iron that is strong and resistant, perfect for the edge of one of the deadliest weapons. But just like iron, steel has one enemy, oxygen. Oxygen reacts quite easily with iron and corrodes its surface. That is why iron is commonly found with this reddish color. By adding at least 12% chrome and some nickel to the steel alloy, it becomes stain less. This occurs because the chrome creates a passivating layer on the surface of the steel, avoiding the iron to react with oxygen and it doesn't rust. Austenitic stainless steels are the most commonly used in the industry. If you look closely to your silverware like this knife, it says 1810 stainless steel. This means that it has 18% chrome and 10% nickel. In the industry, this is known as 304 steel. If you add some molindinum, then you get IC316. That is one of the most commonly used stainless steels in the industry for its local corrosion resistance and is perfect for food and life science applications. And from here on, it's just some cooking or alchemy. Add some titanium or tantalum and you can avoid intergranular corrosion. Add some more chrome and nickel and you can increase the stability at high temperatures. Keep on going and we stop calling them steels and they become nickel-based alloys, like Alloy 600, Astelloy, or C276, with high oxidation and corrosion resistance, even at high temperatures. Okay, the price of these alloys varies depending on the availability and the type of alloying elements. And buying the most expensive alloy will not guarantee that it's the best fit for your application. What I can really recommend is that you buy your instruments from companies that deliver the 3.1 certificate. The 3.1 certificate will have all the information you need from the materials used to build your instrument, like heat information and if the mill has properly tested the properties and the chemistry of the alloys. Additionally, you should perform PMI or positive material identification tests on your plant to make sure that you're installing the right materials. Selecting the right material is not easy, but your instrumentation and equipment suppliers can help you with that. If you have any application questions, leave them in the comment section below or send me an email. 
I will be happy to address you to the right answers. Thank you for watching. Till next time.